Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I have some more Warhammer 40k news for you. So today Games Workshop came out with an article about Space Marines with their new weapons and war gear updates. And so I figured I'd make a quick video for you guys and just go over my thoughts on everything and let you know what I think about these changes. And before we get into this too, just letting you know for you non-Space Marine players, some of these weapon profiles and stuff are going to be given to other armies as well and it even goes over that in this article. So if you don't play Space Marines yourself and you play something like Tau or Gene Stealer Cult or Imperial Guard, then you're going to be seeing some updates from this Space Marine update as well. But anyways, with that said, let's get into the main content of this video. So the first thing that they've announced is that Flamers are now going to be 12 inch range instead of 8 inch range. This is actually a pretty decent change because now you can have units actually deep strike in or infiltrate onto the board and actually be in range with their flamers without the need for a stratagem to be able to move closer or extend the range of your gun. So for example, like Gene Stealer Cult with their hand flamers. There used to be a thing back in the day where you deep strike in your big squad that's filled with hand flamers, but you'd have to use a stratagem to deep strike them three inches away from the enemy in order to be able to actually use those flamers once they arrived on the board. But now it looks like you're not going to need that stratagem. You can just deep strike in with those guys and be able to shoot all your hand flamers without needing that stratagem. Because even like if you're using salamanders now, you don't necessarily need to use the successor trait for long range marksmen to be able to infiltrate a unit of like three aggressors and have them be able to reach the enemy. You can now use traditional main chapter salamanders and be able to reach the enemy with your flamers once you infiltrate it. And then of course heavy flamers, same thing, also up to 12 inch range. Basically I assume every flamer profile in the game is going to go up to 12 inches at least. And then for stuff like bale flamers, I'm assuming those are still going to stay the same range that they were because they were already over 12 inches. So now let's go into the changes about Meltas. So for the multi melta, which is a weapon we pretty much never saw in 8th edition at all, they're now increasing it to heavy 2, which is good, it's double the shots that it used to be. But now it also has a new ability. Instead of being able to roll 2 dice and pick the highest for your damage when you're within half range, you now get your d6 plus 2 damage for each attack. So that means if you had those unlucky rolls where you rolled like a one in your two is your two dice and so you only get two damage, no matter what minimum you're going to do three damage with this weapon if it ends up going through and actually wounding the target. Again though, this is only when it's made at half range and to be honest in my games in 9th edition so far, every time I've played with something like a Melta, mainly my Eradicator squads when I played Space Marines, I was almost never within half range and the only time I could think that I would be within half range is if I opted to infiltrate a unit of aggressors, which I never did. The only problem with that though is against a good opponent, you could be screened out so that you can't really shoot the target you want to anyways to be able to get that plus two damage and you're going to end up just shooting them at max range anyways or close to max range or at least above half your range so you're not going to get that extra two damage per shot. But it is still a nice little benefit that you get if you do end up finding yourself within half range of your weapon. So to me, the part I like more about this is actually it doubling in the amount of shots it gets. And to me, this ability is better than roll two dice and pick the high because now you have a maximum of eight damage you can do instead of just six with a minimum of three instead of just one but this part is definitely going to be situational and not something you see every game whereas the heavy two is definitely going to be something that impacts every game no matter what and now on to the change that i think i like the most only because i'm biased and the heavy bolter is actually my favorite weapon the imperium has i just think that heavy bolters look incredibly cool and i don't know i just love heavy bolters that's why i kind of gravitated towards imperial fists when i played space marines because i love heavy bolters so heavy bolters are still 36 inch range, heavy 3, strength 5, minus 1 AP, but they're now 2 damage. This will help heavy bolters be more relevant now, especially in stuff like Imperial Fists, because now you'll be able to kill stuff like Primaris Marines a lot more easily, because you basically need half the shots now in order to kill the same amount of Primaris that you would have before. When it comes to single wound models, it's basically the same weapon, but when it comes to multi wound models, it definitely helps out a lot more. And as we've seen in 9th edition, elite armies seem to be doing incredibly well, and in elite armies, pretty much everything has multiple wounds, so this extra damage actually adds a lot more than you would think over the course of a whole game. For hunter killer missiles, they are still 48 inch range, heavy 1, but they're now strength 10 minus 2 d6 damage. The main benefit I can see from this, especially in the meta right now, is it looks like the meta is going to be spamming a lot of toughness 5 3 wound troops. And so now this will actually wound those units on two instead of three. That's the main upside I see to this change is being able to help fight against like custodies or even some of the new space marines that are coming out. It also means there's some other targets too that you'll wound a little bit better. 
like against Imperial Knights, you'll now wound them on threes instead of fours, or any other toughness eight thing in the game, like Plague Burst Crawlers, you wound them on threes instead of fours. So overall, this is a nice little change to the Hunter Killer Missile. Moving on to the melee weapons. The first melee weapon is the Astartes Chainsword, and it does say right here that this is just for Astartes armies. So this isn't going to replace chainswords that you have in stuff like Astra Militarum, for example. This is only going to replace chainswords that are used by Astartes, either Loyalist or Heretic. And I guess the reason being, and it kind of says it up here too, is you would assume that a Space Marine can wield a bigger chainsword than a regular guy in Astra Militarum. So it would make sense that the Astartes chainsword is a little bit better. So the change mainly is that it's just an extra minus one AP now. So you still get your extra attack whenever you fight with it, but it's now minus one AP. This is definitely going to help stuff like Blood Claws, Corn Berserkers, Assault Squads do what they do best, which is clearing out the screen, like the Chaff Infantry. Especially when you consider too that it was announced that all of these different units are now going to have two wounds as well. So they're basically going to be Primaris. That's going to be a pretty big buff overall to all of these units or basically any unit that does use chain swords as their main source of damage. So you're not only going to get like a ton of attacks because of this ability right here, but now you also have the extra minus one AP, which is going to help you kill pretty much everything that's not super heavily armored really good at clearing the chaff infantry or possibly even like other marines as long as they're not like toughness five or have a two up save. So overall, I definitely like this change. Moving on, we come to the new profiles for power axes, power mauls, and power swords. Power axes are going to be plus two strength, minus two AP, one damage. Power mauls are going to be plus three strength, minus one AP and one damage. And power swords are going to be plus one strength, minus three and one damage. And although this is all nice for the Astartes, it's definitely going to help out. I actually think these are bigger buffs for other armies that happen to use these weapons. For example, like Craft Worlds, they use power swords, I believe. Drukari also uses power swords. Astra Militarum can also use power swords. So this kind of plus strength stuff is actually going to benefit those weaker strength units more than it would benefit the Space Marines. Don't get me wrong, it still benefits the Space Marines. This is still all going to be pretty decent on a Space Marine and better on a Space Marine than it is on other guys. But I just mean like a Katachan Company commander now with a power sword is going to be at strength five when attacking Space Marines, which is minus three AP and one damage. That's what I'm trying to say is it helps out those little guys get a little bit stronger to be able to take on these big guys because these big guys can already wound stuff like guardsmen on threes anyways with most weapons so yeah i think this is more or less a bigger buff to other armies that aren't space marines but it's still definitely a buff to space marines as well and then we have the final thing that they announced in this article which is the storm shield Basically, all Storm Shields are going to have the same rules that were released in the Indominus box set, which is now that the bearer is going to have a 4 plus invulnerable save and in addition, add one to their armor saving throws. So it's no longer just a flat 3 up invul, it's a 4 up invul and plus one to your armor saving throws. So this change to the Storm Shield is basically a big buff to Custodes, but it's actually, in my opinion, a nerf for pretty much everything else. The reason being is because custodies have an ability that when they're in a custodian detachment of pure custodies, they get plus one to their invol saves up to a maximum of three plus. So when you had the old storm shield, it was stuck at three plus. It didn't go to a two plus because that would be broken. But now they get their four up invulnerable save from this storm shield, which then gets changed to the three plus. So just like it used to be. But in addition, they get an extra one to their armor saving throws, meaning if they get shot at by minus one AP, they still have a two up save. And if they get shot at by minus two or more AP, they still have a three up and vulnerable save because of their ability. Now compare that to Space Marine Terminators. Space Marine Terminators will now also have a one up armor save. So when they get shot at by minus one AP, they still got their two up armor. So it's a buff in that regard. But if they get shot at by minus two AP, sure they have their three up armor, but they would have had a three up in vault anyways. But now let's say they get shot at by minus three or more AP. They only have a four up invulnerable save instead of a three up invulnerable save. So this, this change when it comes to terminators is only a buff against minus one AP weapons. When it comes to minus two AP weapons, it's pretty much the same. And when it comes to minus three or more AP weapons, it's actually a nerf. And then for units too, like off the top of my head, Wolfen from Space Wolves, uh, yeah, they kind of got nerfed pretty hard by this. And that's because they only have a four up armor in the first place. So they're going to have a three up armor and a four up invul now instead of just having a three up invul. So sure, if they get shot at minus nothing AP, they're going to have their three up armor, but they would have had a three up invul for those shots anyways. So now if they get shot by any AP at all, they have a four up invul instead of a three up invul. 
So yeah, this is definitely a nerf to Wolfen, which is unfortunate because I love that unit as a Space Wolf player myself. And there, it's just an amazing, like, they're amazing models, and I love seeing them on the table. And, yeah, this is definitely a nerf to them. It's a, it's definitely a nerf for Terminators too, but it's actually a really big buff to Custodian Guard, in my opinion. So, this shouldn't say winners and show all three of these. It should just say winners and just show Custodies. <laughs> because, yeah, these guys, I think it's actually a nerf. And same thing with the Wolfen, it's definitely a nerf. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's my take on the Storm Shield. And so I guess that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and possibly even subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Also, if you enjoy what I do here on the channel, please be sure to check me out on Patreon if you want to make some sort of monetary investment to help keep my lights on, since Patreon is the main source of income for this channel. I do offer a bunch of rewards for different patron pledges, stuff like exclusive access to the Almost Pro Gaming Discord server, personalized coaching, custom list building, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you want to help the channel while getting some help yourself, then check out the Patreon page. The link will be in the description of this video, and yeah, consider making a pledge. With that said, thanks to all my past and current patrons. You guys and gals are awesome. I love you all. And thanks to all you regular viewers as well. The channel definitely wouldn't be where it's at today if it wasn't for you guys enjoying my content and watching my videos. And I guess that's it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Wargaming.